In this video, I want to discuss the role and different considerations surrounding ethics in digital journalism. Let's start by defining ethics. First of all, we'll start with the very basics here. The rule, ethics are the rules of conduct recognized in respect to a particular class of human actions or a particular group, culture, etc. Okay? So that's the basics of ethics. What are our standards? What are our rules of conduct for us as individuals, as people, or as a group of people you know, in a specific context? So um, that's the baseline of ethics. Now, as far as journalistic ethics, there's a little more to it. That, that, so we're, we're defining here, when we say journalistic ethics, a code of conduct that outlines the principles, values, and obligations of the craft of journalism. So, again, ethics that are applied specifically to that, that particular core group of journalists. Okay, So, to extend this part of the conversation just a little bit further before we get into it, to you know, some of those different considerations, let's differentiate also between uh, the, the notions of ethical and legal. Legal. So there's some crossover there, as you can see, between ethical and legal, but they are different notions, really. Uh, and so we want to separate those. Legal, we're talking about explicit rules and regulations uh, that govern our society, right? They are applied to a broad collective entity, and their recognition is compulsory. We don't really have a choice. When somebody passes a law, or whether that's local, or state, or national, or whatever, that law is applied to everybody. It's very explicit. It outlines what conduct is or is not acceptable. It's applied to that broad collective entity. It applies to everybody within that jurisdiction. And recognition of that is compulsory. It's not like you can choose to recognize those laws or not. I mean, some people think they can, but they can't. You can't. If it's a law, it's a law, and it's legal. So it's legally binding, right? Ethics, however, are not quite as as compulsory or other things. We'll see. Ethics are, they are encouraged standards of conduct. We are, we are encouraged to behave in a certain way or to recognize a certain code of conduct and things, but, we're, but it's not explicit necessarily, and it's not as compulsory as we'll find. Uh, it's relevant to an individual or a specific organization, and that recognition is voluntary. So there's nothing really binding about an ethical obligation. I mean, it, it, it's something that is encouraged within us, and we're we expected to follow. But if we don't, it's not like you know we're going to go to jail or get a fine necessarily. These these are these are not things that are compulsory. They're things that are voluntary. So legal and ethical are uh, different concepts. Really, there's a lot of crossover. Really, legality is is grounded in in ethics, but uh, but they're not exactly the same thing. So I want to differentiate between those things. Those are there are legal considerations that certainly apply to journalists, um, but then there are also these ethical considerations that we need to have in mind. So the, the the ethical code that we're going to kind of use as our model here is the from the Society of Professional Journalists, their code of ethics, and there are there are like 400 different ethical guidelines or ethical you know, uh, groups, of, you know, codes that journalists can follow. There are a bunch of them out there, and we're just going to use the Society for Professional Journalists because I think it's a broad enough one that it covers what we need to cover. And there are basically four principles here. We'll go through each of these individual, but they're essentially seek truth and report it, minimize harm, act independently, and be accountable and transparent. So as I said, let's go through each of these uh, one at a time and see what we're talking about here. So they, again, these are a code of ethics. These are not legally binding things, but they are things that, that really to have credibility and to be taken seriously and to consider yourself a journalist. These are things that we ought to be doing and things that we ought to consider. And while these, this is not a comprehensive list necessarily, and the things within it are not going to be comprehensive, it should give us a good uh, starting point for, for what we're looking at here in our digital journalism uh, world. So first, seek truth and report it. I mean, that's that's fairly straightforward, right? We want to we want to seek out the truth wherever it is and whatever it is, and then report it, regardless of our, you know, personal inclinations, personal desires, personal interests. We want to find that truth and report on it. So some things to keep in mind that we need to take responsibility for accuracy. We are as journalists responsible for reporting that truth accurately, objectively, fairly, uh, and, and reporting it as it is. Not as we want it to be, but as it is. And we need to take responsibility for that accuracy. We need to provide some context. We need to provide background. We need to not just take, you know, one part of a quote or a snippet or whatever, one part of a story, and frame it in such a way that it makes it look like something. We need to provide a background for this. Where is this coming from? You know, and, and provide the full, the audience with a full understanding of, of what this information means and not just, you know, throughout, you know, scary headlines and, and clickbait and things like that, but provide some context uh, to that information. We need to identify our sources clearly. 
Now, there are times, of course, that you're working on you know, conditions of anonymity, uh, and so, but uh, but we need to, uh, you know, whenever possible and as much as possible, identify those sources. There shouldn't be anything, you know, hidden in the dark here, unless it's going to, you know, as we'll talk about in a minute, if it's going to cause somebody harm, then then that's going to be an issue. But otherwise, we ought to be able to identify our sources clearly, understanding that people typically have a, a, a right to know that and and may not view our information as uh, as uh, valid if we don't provide those sources or we can't provide those sources. So we need to hold those with power accountable. That's one of the main um, kind, of, kind of roles of, of the media, of, of journalists, is to hold those in power accountable and also within that then to, to provide a voice to those who don't have power, to provide a voice to the voiceless, right? But we need to, to keep a check on those who are in power and make sure that they are behaving responsibly uh, within that power. And we need to provide a voice to those who may not have it otherwise. And we need to label advocacy and commentary. We need to differentiate between news reporting and factual reporting. And when we are when we are promoting something or when we're providing commentary or opinion on something, those need to be distinguished between uh, very clearly. We need to have a really clearly defined line. Doesn't mean you can't do both, even for example. But but you've got to identify when you're doing one or the other. We also need to minimize harm. This is another item within the Code of Ethics. We need to minimize harm as much as possible, um, and hopefully altogether. I mean, you can't ever guarantee that, but we need to minimize harm. Do what we can to minimize harm. We need to balance the public need for information against potential harm. Now, it doesn't, you know, especially for non-public figures, it's not necessarily the public's right to know everything that happens in the world. Okay? It's the right to know things that are going to impact them and, and that would be important to them, and, and but we also need to to weigh against this. What's the potential harm of this? Who who you know? And and we have to be careful with this when people are making these decisions uh, that we're not using this too broadly. But but we need to balance that need. What does the public need uh, to know? What information do they need to have against what's the potential harm here for them? We need to show compassion to people. We need to you know that doesn't mean we necessarily go soft on people, but we need to have a heart. We need to see how this affects people and what we're doing actually affect affects people. We need to show them compassion. We need to balance, uh, for example, the right to a fair trial with the public right to know. We don't need to try cases in the media. In, in, so while we're, we want to report the information and let the public know what's happening, but we want to also balance that with the, the individual's right to a fair trial. Again, um, we need to balance that public need for info against potential harm against that person and against the justice system and so forth. So, we need to consider the long-term implications of what we're doing. This isn't just a story that's going to maybe run for an hour or a day or whatever. This could have long-term implications. We need to think about that and weigh that against everything else. We also need to act independently. We need, as journalists, to, to have that independence and not be um, bound to, to another person or, or organization. So uh, we need to avoid conflicts of interest. And when we can't, we need to, to disclose those. If, they're, if it's unavoidable, then we need to disclose those unavoidable conflicts, but as much as possible, avoid those conflicts of interest altogether. You may have a story, but you say, I have a conflict, so let me pass this off to a colleague or somebody else who can pursue this, you know, without that conflict. Or if it's impossible, it's not possible to do that, then we need to disclose that conflict. We need to refuse gifts, favors, fees, special treatment, anything like that that's going to be uh, something that, that somebody could say, well, you know, that's a little too far. We need to be independent. We, we, can't, we need to be above the notion that we've been bought, in essence, by somebody else, that we've bought, somebody's been able to buy favorable coverage or so forth um, by providing us with those things. And don't pay for, for access to news. We ought to always be suspicious. Anytime somebody says, yeah, I've got a real juicy uh, juicy tidbit for you here that I'd be happy to pass along some juicy info, but I'm going to need some money for it. That's, that's a big red flag. So we shouldn't be paying for access to news. We shouldn't be paying for information, uh, those types of things. That's just really sketchy and not something we want to get into. And then we need to distinguish news from advertising very clearly. Again, we need to disclose these, this information and these relationships, and, and we need to distinguish between these things. Finally, we need to be accountable and transparent. We, we need to be accountable for what we're doing and be transparent. We need to explain our ethical choices and processes. We need to be clear about how we came to these things and why we're doing these things and how we came to these conclusions and, and, and the process we used to get to this place in, in reporting a story. Uh, we need to be able to explain that and be able to do so with a clear conscience. We need to acknowledge uh, mistakes and correct them 
promptly. Any mistake that we make, we need to acknowledge it and then, and then correct it. There are mistakes that are going to be made. So own up to it and, and correct it. Expose uneth unethical conduct in journalism. Can, even if it's within your organization, we need to be able to say, this is, this is go going on and this is wrong. We need to abide by the high standards we would expect in others. You know, whatever we expect from journalists we respect, then we need to try and emulate that in our own actions. Some questions in particular for digital media ethics um, from uh, you know, uh, Stephen Ward presented these in the, uh, for the University of Wisconsin-Madison Center for Journalism Ethics. Uh, some questions that he posed in this article uh, for specifically for digital media. First of all, asking who's a, what, who's a journalist? That line is becoming blurred now, right? It's not just somebody who works for a major paper or major news organization. Really, anybody could be a journalist. So we need to consider that question. Who's a journalist? What is journalism? Within that, you know, what, what do we consider journalism? What do we consider just content um, production and things like that? So we need to answer those questions. We need to, to consider anonymity, right? And how do we regard that? Not just uh, what about somebody who posts a story anonymously? Not just using confidential sources and anonymous sources, but what about somebody who posts a story and doesn't provide their name? Is that, you know, is that appropriate? Is that acceptable? Uh, speed, rumor, and corrections. We know that the news moves really fast now. People are in such a hurry to not get scooped. So they put stuff out there, whether they really have the story or not, whether it's really defined and whether it's really been corroborated. Then we post rumors and things like that. And then we just depend on corrections. But, but those things happen a little too quickly. And so we need to consider that. Uh, impartiality, conflicts of interest, and partisan journalism. Uh, that's becoming more and more... Uh, prevalent as we see citizen journalists and and um, people who aren't really well versed in these types of ethics uh, we see a lot of that going on entrepreneurial not-for-profit journalism meaning a lot of journalists are now working for themselves they don't have advertising departments and they're not just concerned with reporting and journalism they have to also be funding their their process and things like that which puts them in kind of some sketchy territory too but it's just part of i mean that's the way the world works anymore so we need to um, be uh, considering how we handle those types of situations, right? Reporters using social media, both using it as a source and then also being on social media themselves. Does that place them in the story? Does it have them um, projecting their own uh, biases and opinions uh, through that social media account? And then citizen journalists and using citizen content. You know, again, who is a journalist? Do we have? I mean, do you need a degree? Do you need some training in journalism to be a journalist, or do we just accept that from everybody who wants to put something on the internet? Uh, and then, how do we use that content, both the written stuff and 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 including and maybe especially things like images and videos and things? I mean, that can be doctored, but can also come from anywhere. So, how do we appropriately assign and use those types of of uh, content, like pictures and videos and things? So some questions that we need to be asking ourselves as we move into digital journalism from an ethical perspective. If you have any questions, feel free to email me. I'm always happy to talk about anything related to digital journalism and, and hope to hear from me soon. In the meantime, consider how these things really impact you as a, as a you know, digital journalist and what ethical considerations uh, might need to be on, on your mind as you move forward.